This is a Group 10 production. Lesson 7. Education. The African American Experience. Abraham Lincoln issued an executive order on January 1, 1863, proclaiming freedom for all slaves. True emancipation was a very slow process, even with the passing of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. Despite the passing of the Reconstruction Amendment, the United States was still a divided country. The Democrats had regained power in the South and the Jim Crow laws were enacted. Jim Crow laws claimed the separate but equal doctrine. The theory was that Caucasian and African Americans would have equal accommodation but separate from each other. This made segregation legal in all public places, including schools. The separation came, but not the equality. Books and supplies were scarce at minority schools. The African American adults had aspirations for their children to become more than just laborers. In 1892, Homer Plessy challenged the Jim Crow law as he attempted to purchase a first-class train ticket in New Orleans, Louisiana. In 1896, the country's attention was on the Supreme Court as they decided this landmark case. A reversal of this law would mean all public places, including schools, would have to integrate. The decision was upheld and African Americans continued attending segregated schools with very limited supplies. Many wealthy philanthropists like Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller began to provide funding to historically black colleges and universities. Colleges such as Bethune-Cookman founded by Mary McLeod Bethune and Tuskegee Institute founded by Dr. Booker T. Washington were benefactors of these gifts. Renowned scientist and inventor George Washington Carver also graced the halls of Tuskegee. These colleges and universities cultivated the minds of several future great Americans. W.E.B. Du Bois was one of the few African Americans that was afforded the opportunity to attend a predominantly white university. In 1895, Du Bois became the first African American to obtain a doctorate degree from Harvard University. W.E.B. Du Bois was also a co-founder member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP. Jim Crow laws were still in effect as the 1950s began and African Americans were tired of being treated like second-class citizens of the United States. We still were separate, but not equal. HBCU graduate and chief legal counsel for the NAACP, Thurgood Marshall, challenged the Plessy v. Ferguson ruling with the Brown v. Board of Education case in 1954. With Marshall as lead counsel, a Supreme Court victory is won in the Brown v. Board of Education case. The Jim Crow law of separate but equal is ruled unconstitutional. Thurgood Marshall would have continued success in his legal career, winning 29 out of 32 cases that he argued before the Supreme Court. Afterwards, he would become the first African American Supreme Court Justice in the United States. The Brown vs. Board of Education victory did little initially as schools were still segregated and funding for education did not increase for African American schools. After a lot of pressure from the African American community, the federal government finally stepped in and began to force states to integrate. Little Rock, Arkansas would gain national attention for attempting to refuse African-American students. 
Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, witnessed nine courageous young teens integrate the school. On September 23, 1957, hundreds of Caucasian parents and students responded with so much hatred and violence that President Dwight Eisenhower called in the National Guard as escorts for the nine teens the following day. In June of 1963, the governor of Alabama, George Wallace, stood in front of an entrance at the University of Alabama forbidding integration. Just months prior to this act of defiance at his alma mater, George Wallace would deliver a hate-filled inaugural speech that reinforced the law of Jim Crow with the words, In the name of the greatest people that have ever trod this earth, I draw the line in the dust and toss the gauntlet before the feet of tyranny. And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. The Brown versus Board of Education case created turmoil across the United States. The constant struggle took its toll on the tired and weary students that just wanted a proper education. As integration took place, African Americans were bust, miles in the name of integration and the need for security continued. Children looked at machine guns held by the National Guard that were there to protect them and bowels and bat were held by Caucasian parents and students wanting to harm them. This was not a conducive learning environment. Faced with adversities, these children took everything that was thrown at them and persevered through insurmountable obstacles for a chance at an education and equality. While holding their heads up high and looking at adversaries directly in the eye saying, get used to me being here because this is where I belong.